two main commodities grown on our farm are corn and soybeans. You've watched us produce those commodities, but what do we do with them after they're put in the bins and harvest is complete for the year? All right, we're getting ready to load here. I thought I'd show you guys how we do that. Of course, we have our leg frames here, which go up to this overhead tank, which goes all the way up in there. And uh, this overhead door here actually does not fold up and over because the tanks are up over. This door just goes straight up and down. It has these big hanging weights right here that pull the door up and down. Uh, this tank here goes quite a ways up in there, holds about 1,500 bushels. Uh, we actually built this whole assembly. And these doors are on rollers, there's four of them. Uh, this was originally a feed mill, so sometimes you have bean meal or or whatever, uh, different types of ingredients we mixed for hogs, but uh, since we no longer have livestock, we just use it for grain. We put a deflector up there so they all, they all fill up. All they do is still have to open four doors up. I'll show you guys here. All right, there's those big weights. You can see they go up to the cable. And that whole door goes up in here. And those tanks actually go up there about the same height as the leg there. It's a 100 foot leg, 85 above ground. Or 95 foot leg. Uh, it's 10 foot berry. There's the pit. You just caught a glimpse of the augers where they entered the leg elevator. Here's a view from outside the building where the augers go through the side, as well as this big steel galvanized bin there, which is where the feed mill originally was. Uh, that bin is a 27 ton capacity bin, which the ingredients ran down into, and there was a separate room underneath of it, which we're going into right here. That's uh, black stain there on the floor. That, that's just uh, condensation and old feed. Uh, that been its life is getting on but that is where the hammer mills originally sat and if we would like to have some more storage we might configure some sort of a hopper towards the bottom and an auger to where uh, that can all run into an auger then back into the leg pit and there is where you can see where that came out of that mill and then it went up a tube and it went up into the overhead tanks for load out into a feed cart the leg and bin configuration was put together over a series of years uh, and it's pretty old by today's standards. The leg is only 3,000 bushel per hour capacity and the facility holds about 65 to 70,000 bushels depending on which of the overhead tanks you're filling. We primarily use that facility for soybeans. With the overhead tanks being automated, we can drive off leaving the tanks running. So when we get back, they are full. The automatic switch kicks the leg out, and we are ready to fill the truck up again in about four minutes' time. That's with pulling up and taking your time to load it. We used to be livestock producers. We used all the grain that was in that facility and more per year we ground 100 percent of the corn uh, and then we bought corn regularly but during the 90s things changed and we became a grain farm the rest of our grain bins are just filled with an auger and emptied with an auger for but now that you've seen our facilities let me take you around and show you some of the terminals that we dump at terminal you're seeing here in the background is Bartlett Council Bluffs Iowa there's two locations in the Council Bluffs town this is the south elevator uh, both of these have been somewhat swallowed up by the city so you do have to go through some traffic to get to them and by today's standards it's an out-of-date facility however their bid was uh, pretty good so we chose to sell them some corn uh, this plant does not process anything it's a receiving and redistributing I believe that the Bartlett family was founded upon that as a large exporter. I, I have a gut feeling that most of this is probably going to Mexico. Uh, they had several rail cars at the location uh, when I arrived there and they were uh, loading things up. So they had a pretty good line of trucks and as long as there's trucks coming in they're filling rail cars and on its way it goes. I do like watching and looking at these old uh, terminals. They're pretty neat. Those big old concrete silos. And, and, 
and uh, a lot of the modern day ones are grain bins with these are big old concrete silos and they have the big old concrete uh, housing where the elevators go up through the dump pits uh, again it's probably a little outdated by today's standards especially when you compare it to the ethanol plants we haul to but for its time era it was uh, quite a facility and those it, it even had ducting along the walls uh, for uh, the air around the corn and it's uh, a little bit more to it than just um, what people think when they drive by. There's a lot of these abandoned the cities to look at me. Oh, that's an old dump. And if you ever had a chance to tour it or see it in its prime, it's a pretty remarkable engineering feat. Wait till the scare clears here. Then we go green light. We'll go on the scale. And we'll come up on the scale. We got our weight. Hang out the window here. That'll do your noise. Then they'll weigh you. Now we drive down here. I'm the only one here today, actually. It's uh, Saturday when we're in here. We're gonna go to the probe shack, and then we'll come out of that and come back around to the pits. We just did our card right here, but then you actually had to pull up a few more feet to the red light here. And there's the big tanks where the beans go. Each one of those, I believe, is a million bushels. And they are probing us right now. This is the probe shack. And we just went through the probe. Now we are going down here to the pits. And there are three pits. Two here, one to the rail. A lot of times they'll leave the rail one opening to swerve over there and go through it. Uh, I think they get a lot of beans with rail. And today's a quiet day, so there's just not a lot of activity going on here, so we just got one pit open. And now we're actually going to the outbound scales, which is right next to the inbound. Back up there to the scale house where they print you a ticket and you never have to actually talk to anybody. Pretty simple. Besides middlemen such as the co-op, in our area there are not a huge amount of soybean places to sell to. Uh, Bungie, such as you're seeing here, or AGP, which is located in St. Joseph, Missouri, would be the only two large plants that are close. Although there is a project in the works called Fuel the Crush, which could add pretty good markets to the soybean industry. Uh, you guys are seeing an often site at any plant location, which is waiting in line or waiting on the pits to clear. The dump pits at these places are impressive, to say the least, but when you're talking 100 trucks in line, it's still slow. Most of those grain leg elevators at places like you're seeing here, uh, which again is bungy, are probably 20 to 50,000 bushels an hour. So it takes about one minute to unload a semi. It is neat seeing the other types of trucks in line, but then it's back to the races, bumping and grinding, sometimes through rush hour traffic, such as what you're seeing here on Friday evening, five o'clock. And back home to get loaded for the weekend, sit, recover, and on the road again Monday. Most of our corn goes to ethanol, which the plant you are seeing here is called Elite Octane. This is a large plant which chews through 150,000 bushels of corn per day. And we sell to several other ethanol plants within the local area. Just depends on who has the best bid versus costs of fuel and driving per mile and basis and multiple other things. I hope you enjoyed this short version of where we haul our grain to. And if you like this style of video or like any of the videos on this channel, please hit the subscribe button. It helps a lot. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.